There we are. Hey, everybody. We're going to get started here in just a minute. And I think it's just going to be me today. I know Tim is traveling. So we will get started here in just a second. Good to see a lot of familiar names and faces. How do I turn off this waiting room? There we go. All right, there it is. I just want to turn off the waiting room. Thanks for hopping on, everybody. About two minutes past, so why don't we get started? I'm sure uh, more folks will be hopping on here soon, but let's get let's get rolling. Thanks for uh, thanks for hopping on. So today's uh, today's an AI day. Today's a ChatGPT day. Um, I feel like you know, on to one end, you know, ChatGPT seems like old hat these days, right? I feel like it was just a year ago. You know, we were I was doing a presentation about how you know revolutionary it is, and it still is revolutionary, right? But it's advanced so much in the past year or so that you know, there's like this. Uh, old chat GPT, there's the new chat GPT, there's different ways to use it. Um, today, we're going to get into an interesting concept, which I found out, I think it was two sessions ago, when we started using chat GPT for building some social media content, that um, many folks weren't using the custom GPT. Would love to just go around and get a sense for everybody about how are you using chat GPT? Are you using it at all? You know, if you're not using it perfectly fine, you're just kind of trying to figure out, hey, how, how do I dive into this? Um, who's using ChatGPT? Awesome. How are you using it on a regular basis? Feel free to share about how are you finding, you know, that you're using it? What, what's the most common way that you're using it? Or what's the way that you can't live without these days? I would say for me, um, because I my brain handles so much information, I use it at times to help refine some of my emails, particularly back to parents. Um, and yeah. there are times, so now we're doing a new initiative where we're writing uh, personalized letters to kids when they interview with us. And so um, that can be quite a task. Uh, so I'll just you know <laughs> throw in my impressions of, of the students and say, okay, can you write something that's to an eighth grader, try to be funny, um, here are the things they talked about, and then like I'll take it and tweak it and add different things, but just to help free up my brain for a bit. Absolutely, love it. And and I'll, literally as you're I'll, as you're I'll saying, say that, you like. Oh, go ahead. Um, I write about um, anywhere between three to five stories per week. Some of those are by interviewing, and I completely do the entire transcript on AI and then sometimes I just take the transcript and um, use it to avoid blank page syndrome etc. Um, I also use it for all my headlines and subheaders to especially since in the school setting we have a lot of repeat events and I want to make it sound fresh and new and um, uh, you know we start this process every Monday and I have to finish every Thursday and it's a lot of content to write. I also do, um, I use it for proofreading. I, I, I mean, I'm, I don't use chat GPT for that, but um, I would say it doesn't necessarily save my time, but it definitely saves my brain. <laughs> right. And, you know, as Tiffany was talking as well, and, and Sally, like, I feel like we're all probably going to be using it in a lot of different ways. I literally just thought about, why don't we just open up a document here? And talk about the different ways that we're utilizing it because i'm sure we can all learn from each other like oh i didn't think about using it that way that's really interesting um 
So if I missed anything, let me know, but you, or type it in the chat. It might be an easy way. But like, re, yes, refining emails, personalized emails. I think you were saying, Tiffany, to, to the students. You know, you were even saying, right, make it live a little bit humorous. You have to add some humor, right? So adding humor, right? So that's all about style, tone, headlines and subheaders, proofreading. What else? What are some other ways that you're you're using on an everyday basis? I'll, I'll just mention for myself that I've used it to simplify text. Um, like if I am going from a, a full article that I want to narrow down to a shorter text, um, you know, I'll, I'll say, you know, please simplify this in this many words or this many paragraphs to get the gist um, uh, in, in a shorter for form. Um, I've also done things just like rewrite in a similar fashion so that it sounds fresh. Um, and then I even one time did, uh, I wanted to see what, what chat GPT would come up with, um, a different view, uh, for my re-enrollment plan. Um, and I asked for a re re-enrollment plan creation with a step-by-step -step process just to see if there's anything that I'm missing in my process that chat GPT might come up with based on, you know, it's learning. Almost like a second pair of eyes. Right. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty unique. How did you find it? Did it work out for you when doing the, did it give you any unique ideas or things you missed? Yeah, I think with everything that I've done with ChatGPT, I've never taken it as is. <laughs> I, yeah. I take that as my, my framework or starting point. Um, so when I asked for our step-by-step re-enrollment plan, um, I kind of specified who we were, what we do, um, and it gave me a list of 10 steps, uh, some of which were kind of a bit extra or, you know, didn't really fit with who we are. So I'm sure if I, if I modified my instructions, I probably would have got a, a, a better, clearer plan based on who we are. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's always the case, right? It's like, how much do we need to train it to really be able to provide the right prompts? So that's what we're actually going to get into today a bit, is the training aspect. Um, and so, be yeah, be before we dive into that, what else? How else is anybody else using it in a different way? And we were within what we've already discussed. I'll just put in here, I think, from what we talked about even two weeks ago, right? coming up with a social media um, posting calendar, right? So it's one thing to help you write captions and, hey, write this post for this image or video. It's just come up with a whole calendar, right? And like, this will lead into what we're gonna get into today. So I'll mention a few things we talked about a couple of weeks ago, especially for those that weren't on, right? It, it was like, um, write portrait of a graduate statements. Right. So if you don't have a portrait of a graduate, you're thinking about putting that together, being able to teach chat GPT about who you are and say, hey, you know, develop three to five portrait of a graduate statements. And here's what a portrait of a graduate is. And that'll lead us into what we're going to get into today. So let, let me ask, has anybody set up their own custom GPT or school GPT? And hopefully from the email... I saw a lot of a lot of head shakes. So um it sounds like we haven't set that up yet. And that's I think that's so this is the next step, right? It's you know, we're all kind of using it for a variety of different purposes, which are all perfect, exactly how you know we should be using it. But it's how do we create it so that you know we don't have to teach it about our school anymore, right? It is an extension of the school. It understands who we are, our mission statements, our branding, our tone, our voice how we write ads, how we write emails, when to be funny, when not to be funny, how we write blog posts, right? Because without what we're going to go through today, every time you're kind of teaching it, you're starting fresh, especially if you're starting a new chat. You know, it's one thing if you're in the same chat, right? It remembers what you wrote before. Um, but, you know, really where ChatGPT especially shines is yes, you can give it instructions, but if you, it does a great job if you give it examples, 
right? If you say like, here's something I really like, model this. Does everybody use examples? Sally, use examples? Yeah, examples are definitely the best way. Like if you find something that you really like from a style, tone, structure, say, hey, write this, whatever, email, using this as your inspiration. I want you to model the style, tone, and structure. I know a few, a few more people have, have been hopping on. What we're going through is first talking about how are you using ChatGPT currently? And we're just creating kind of a, a brain dump list of how different folks are using them. And these are all great examples. Um, anything else? I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we, I could probably just sit here for the next hour and write all the different ways that we could use ChatGPT. Uh, but is there any big obvious ones that I've missed or ones that, again, you feel like, hey, at this point, you couldn't live without utilizing this? Um, Clint, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, I lost connection for a quick second when someone was talking about how they use the social media posting calendar. Yeah. Can I just hear, can I hear what I missed on that? What, how they use that? Oh, sure. So that I, I was mentioning that we talked about that two sessions ago. Okay. Um, not, I, I'm happy to go through it. I'm just, I was just mentioning that, like we were talking about social media and I think one of the challenges with so much with social media is always feeling like, Hey, I need to post what happened today or yesterday. And you're always kind of in this cycle of, you know, I, I have to post today, I have to post today, rather than being able to plan it ahead. You know, what do I write? How can I plan ahead? And you can actually use ChatGPT to plan out your calendar. And I think we, let me see if I can find it here in my history of, I wish there was a search function, by the way. I think that's the one thing it's missing. Um, Montessori, there's something about Montessori. So this might have been it. Is this in? Yeah, this is actually it, I think. Yes, yeah, so this is where we, we built out a social media calendar based upon the school, right? So we started with, and we were using Montessori as the example. What are the top three reasons families choose a Montessori school? Here are the top three reasons. And this was a series of prompts. So this was prompt chaining. Um, now I want you to help me create social media content based upon those three personas. So it helped identify what families are looking for. Once we start feeding it some more information, then we said, where do we get down to? Okay, create a 30 day social media posting plan that focuses on attracting prospective families to our school, based the content ideas on why families choose our school, their fears, frustrations, goals, and aspirations, and the features and benefits of our school as it relates to the portrait of a graduate. Now, this is where everybody was like, why would you write this? Like, this is a, a weird one, but from testing it myself, first learning from some of the AI gurus out there that are testing all this stuff, if you say things like, you're gonna get a $10,000 bonus, you know, for uh, producing social media posts that goes viral or, and then take a deep breath. Things like this actually help with, um, with posting. So anyway, it, it essentially gave us a 30 day calendar. So all can that you, being can said, you send me that document. Yeah, I, I, we will, I'll put this together and tidy it up and, uh, we can put it together. Uh, I'm trying to think the best way we could just send it as a follow-up to this, uh, cause I was gonna say, usually we post it on YouTube, but if we don't have it there, I could send this as a follow-up. And we're gonna go through a lot of this today, by the way. So I, you know, today is taking this and making it better because essentially what did I do? Like I had to start from scratch here, right? You know, why do families choose a Montessori school? So it's like, I would have to teach it about, if I'm a Montessori school, I have to teach it about a Montessori school. And so that will lead us into, let's dive into today, which is, all about building a custom GPT. So again, what a custom GPT is, is if you go in and let me, let me, I'm almost positive this is the case that I do believe that you need the $20 plan that chat that OpenAI has for this. I could be wrong, 
but I'm pretty sure you do. If you're, if you have the free version, you may not be able to do this, uh, but you do need the, the, I think you need the paid version. So you want to go to explore GP, GPTs. And if you want to open this up and even follow along, that, that might be um, helpful just so you kind of get in the flow of, hey, here's what I, what I would have to do. Let me next out of that. All right. So you want to go to explore GPTs on the side. Now, what you see here is what's been popular over like the past six months is chat open AI has created this marketplace now where, you know, hey, if you want to even create your own business, you can create your own business by creating a chat GPT that you sell, right? That accomplishes a specific task. And some are free, some are paid. Um, I haven't tested this one, but I heard the Canva one is amazing where you can connect your uh, chat GPT to Canva for your, uh, for your content creation and Im image creation. But if you just scroll through the marketplace, it has all of, the, you can build a chat GPT for a specific purpose, right? Um, you know, if you want something that's really good at producing images or um, you could see here consensus, like doing research, let me see, code, right? So if you wanted to write something with code, there's, you would use this chat GPT. So instead of just starting from scratch, you would start with a GPT that was pre-made and pre-trained for a specific task, whether it's coding, whether it's building presentation slides. This is actually pretty good. I've used this. Um, if you wanted to analyze data, so like if you have parent surveys, you could use the parent, the data analyst, ChatGPT, and use that to analyze your data. Um, so feel free to explore um, all these. If anybody wants to create their own coloring book, you can do that as well. So there's a lot of chat GPTs now in this marketplace. It's almost like an app marketplace, right? But for specific purposes. What we're going to do today is build a your school GPT. Um, so that's what we're going to name it. And uh, we'll go through, I'll, I'll just do a demo one here and show you. You can see here, I built one for my business, Ames GPT. Uh, I've done one for Montessori schools. So you can build this specifically for your school. And you don't have to put it in the marketplace, by the way. This is obviously people that, you know, either want to sell them or um, we're just creating free, free GPTs. What we're talking about is your GPT for your school that you use internally, right? So what you want to do here is come to create. And now we start creating your chat GPT. It's going gonna, it's gonna to essentially prompt you by saying, teach me, teach me who you are. So what you want to have ready, um, let me see, I made a checklist of this. Let me see. Bear with me one second. I'm going to copy and paste this. I'll put this into here. Make sure I don't miss any chat messages. Okay, sorry, I missed some chat messages here. Uh, iterate content describing annual events. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, Matt, you would ask where create is. Let me let me pull that back onto the screen. So let's go backwards. Just make sure everybody's in the same spot. You log into ChatGPT. Typically, you are here. You want to go to explore GPTs. Then you want to go to create, and this will take you to the create screen. So then it's going to say, I think there's what? a paywall. We can't follow you unless we. Okay. A... That's so uh, that's, I was wondering where the paywall would kick in. Yeah. So thank you, Sally, to confirm you do need the $20 a month plan to do this. I think it's absolutely worth it to do the $20 a month plan. So if you're not doing that, I, I would recommend it. Um, and you get the newest version of ChatGPT as well. I don't know if anybody's tried it. It's called the chat, uh, was it, hold on, 4.0 Canvas, I think is it's called. Yeah, 4.0 with Canvas. It's amazing. Like if you haven't messed around with it, just start playing around with it. It allows you to fix specific, like if you, let's say you write a blog post, right? You say, hey, ChatGPT, write me a blog post. Not the greatest prompt, but you, you get a blog post, right? And you're going to get an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Before, if you wanted to fix that up, you would have to say, hey, yeah, fix the middle and rewrite this. Now with Canvas, you could just like click on a section, like 
expand this, right, right, be more descriptive about this section. So it can do a lot of really cool things. Um, so mess around with that if you haven't already. But let's go back into create. So what we want to do is create. And so what we want to say is, um, what do we want to say? I want to create a GPT to help me with content creation for my school. And then I would put your school website in there, but let's call it, we're going to say Ames Academy. This includes blog content, social media content, ad copy, email copy, and website copy, right? So if you specifically want to use it for your content creation, you can create a chat GPT just for your school as related to content creation. If you wanted it to help with, you know, Phil, something like you said, which was, you know, help with my enrollment, re-enrollment plan, you know, you could say, hey, I'm going to teach you to be um, an expert admissions director or something like that. And you teach it everything you know about being an admissions director and it can help you with admissions plans. So not necessarily copy. So you can even create a chat GPT for your school based upon content and a chat GPT one that's based upon Maybe it's just marketing communication strategy or admission strategies and, and enrollment. For, for today's purposes, let's talk about, since a lot of our focus is on marketing, let's talk about how we're going to use ChatGPT to help in content creation so that it's branded for your school. Right? So I want to create a chat. So let's just say that's what it's going to be. And what's going to happen is we're just, we're just going to teach it, Right we're going to dump as much information into this as possible about your school. So as this is loading, what I put into this document, which I'm going to share with you all, and let me, I'll do this even right now. So let's share. Let's go. Anyone with the link is going to be a viewer. So make sure if you want to edit this, just copy and uh, copy it, download and copy it. So I'll put this in the chat if you want to follow along. Hold on. Where's the chat button? All right. So I put that document in the chat. And so here are the things that you would want to gather. So as you think about building your, your own chat GPT, gather up your mission statements, brand guidelines, portrait of a graduate statements, any marketing materials that you have, right? This could be as simple as... Um, Go into your web, you know, uploading your website, you know, say, here's my website or go into your website and copy and pasting pieces of, of content from your website in here. You can also just give it the link to, it does fine with browsing the internet now. Um, so you want to give it a name. So let's just call it Ames Academy GPT. So we are going to call it Ames Academy GPT. All right, so it's just going to prompt you with instructions. And there's two sections here. This is kind of like a free text, or you could follow the configure section, which will help guide you along in terms of how we're going to configure this. Yeah, it's going to create a profile picture so you can put your own logo in there. This is all just, you know, set up things. We'll, we'll skip part of this. But let me let me go back to here, right? So what I would start doing is, um, you know, go to your website. Matt, I see you're on here. I know your website. Let's just go to go to your website if that's fine. And I, yeah. I would just go to, you know, go to our about, right? Our vision, right? So I would take this and just copy and paste it. Okay, here's our vision. Okay. Right? And I would start taking this and loading it in here. Here's our vision. Here's our portrait of a graduate, right? So step one is kind of loading all of your, your content in there. And then what I would do is part two or not part two, but as an expansion of this, sample communications. I think this is key. Take your blog posts, your social media content, your email content, anything that you've written where mm -hmm. it's in a specific style and tone and put that in there. Say, this is an example of our blog post style, tone, and structure. This is an example of our ad copy. Load that in. So then, you know, a week from today, if you say, okay, I'm ready to write some ad copy for my new ads, it will know what the structure is already and the style and tone. All right, there we go. How do we like my profile picture? That looks great. 
Um, <laughs> looks great. Let's keep moving forward here. Now, you can say, what do we want to focus on or avoid, right? You can also say, avoid certain topics. Make sure you're not controversial. Make sure make sure we're, it's in a bold tone, right? Make sure we don't talk anything about politics, right? You can make sure it avoids things when it, when it writes. But um, what would we like to focus on? Um, let's see here. We go to the configure section. So what it's doing, as you feed it information over here, it's building the instructions over here. And then you can keep tweaking this and editing this as, as you go. Um, yeah, so I would, do, I would do a couple things. One is you could upload files in here. So if this is where if you have PDFs or documents, anything you wanted to, to you know, so like Tiffany, you were talking about the emails that you sent to students. Like here's examples of emails that we sent to students and just upload that as an example document. And everything that you load in here, it's loading into its knowledge base. So you're building a specific knowledge base for your school. Um, let's see here. Matt, is it okay if we use your, your website as an example just to yeah. for yeah. purposes? All right, Ames Academy is now. So let's see. That's all. I'm behind on that. <laughs> I just wanted to go here for the content um, is still timeless, but it's been a few here, years. I, I, here's what I wanted to do because this was written by you, right? Yeah. So this is in your style, your tone, your structure, right? Um, I want you to, so you can do things like this analyze the following blog article for style tone and structure. All right, so now it's analyzing the tone. I agree with it so far. Perfect, it sound great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, nailing it. Okay, now what, what I would say is I want to use the same style, tone, and structure for all future blog articles. So now if we were to go, if Matt were to go write a blog article, right, it, once he has a topic, it'll start using that same style, tone, and structure. So if you decide to lean on ChatGPT for that type of content, this this will help. So then, what I would do now is keep moving forward with with more more content, right? Um, so this would probably I would probably sit down and probably take about an hour and just do this and just go through all of the core elements of your site. Right, so can I ask you a quick question, Clint? Yes. Are you? I thought I heard you say earlier that you you provided the site to Chat GPT, and now what yeah. I see you doing is individually harvesting um, actual content and putting it in there. Yeah. Can you do both, or do you have to I, do what I you're doing do, right now? I would do both, like. Even though ChatGPT, in my experience, I would love to hear everybody else. In my experience, like when I give it a website, it does a good job of giving like a high level overview about the school um, or about the website it's analyzing. But I don't know if I necessarily trust it yet that it's gone through every piece of content that's on the site. And so like, if I wanna really focus on like, hey, here's our mission statement. This is our portrait of a graduate. I would want to specifically put that in there saying like, for example, um, this is our mission statement, right? Oh, that pulled the link. Um, well, let's see, let's see how it does. Do you understand what our mission statement is? Let's just see if it understands. Oh, 
Okay. So I would take the time and go through and say, this is our mission statement. This is um, our portrait of a graduate. Um, this is our methodology, right? So I would go through here and feed all of this information. You can definitely give it the website and all of the links. But like I said, I would go through anything that's important for understanding your school, your mission, your style, your tone, unique aspects of the school. I would just load it in here. And then again, yes, you take the time now, but then all future content that you create, it'll be that much quicker. There's less editing on the go. You don't have to say, oh, make, write it in this style. Um, so I think Sally, you had said, you know, it doesn't necessarily save you time. You know, hopefully it does both, right? It can save you some brain power, right? That we have to expend, but ultimately hopefully it does save time. And if you take a little bit of this time early on that, you know, if you think about what is, what do we spend a lot of our time on when, when it comes to ChatGPT, at least for me, it always used to be like re-editing. No, write that better, write that longer, write it in this style, write it in this tone, fix this up. And so if we do a better job of giving it the information ahead of time, um, you have less of that ongoing editing, right? So again, I, I would put in um, ad copy, any ads that you're running that you really like or that perform well, I put that in here. Here's an example of a piece of ad copy that really works well analyzing the style, tone, and structure, write all future ads in the same style, tone, and structure. So I would just keep going. Um, but I, I would even ask, uh, what else do you need from me to help create mission appropriate on-brand content for my school uh, content strategy? Let's see what it says. Right? So who who are your ideal families? Right? So, okay, here's our, our family personas. We were talking about this a couple sessions ago. I think there's some people said they had av parent avatars. Some said they didn't. If you don't nail down those, who are the avatars of your ideal families? And typically, I would, I would try to get like three. Right. There's three types of families, ideally, you know, obviously there's more than that, but three core types of families that are you know, mission appropriate for the school or that are looking for your, your school. Right. I could think about, I remember working with a school, they're a classical Christian uh, school. And what they said was, hey, there's 50 percent of our audience knows that they want a classical Christian education. OK, so you're going to communicate to them a little bit differently because you're comparing yourself versus other classical Christian. And then there's another half of the group, which is they don't necessarily, they're comparing classical Christian versus other school models, the you know traditional private schools and other school models. And they're trying to decide what's best for their child. So you're going to communicate to them differently. So you can say avatar one is they know they want a classical Christian model. Here's what we offer and here's what they're looking for. So you would want to go through and put in who your ideal families, right? Core values, tone details. I would do this by just uploading existing content. Don't worry about coming up with the tone yourself. One of the things I really like to do with ChatGPT is upload a piece of content and do what, it, what I showed earlier. Analyze this for style, tone, and structure. And then it gives you a whole brief about, yeah, here's how this is written. Okay, great. Now you can even say to ChatGPT, hey, write this. And you can always, you can turn this into a prompt. I want you to write a blog post with the following tone, style, and structure and give it these instructions. Or you could just say, write a blog post in my normal style, tone, and structure that I've taught you before. Is this is this helpful? Is this making sense? Just want to make sure yeah. everybody's good. All right. So then if you start to know these things, then this will help with, hey, now, based upon what you know about the school, create that 30-day social media calendar for me. Hey, now that you know what the school what, about the school, I want to run an ad campaign for our open house. What type of ads should I run? What should the messaging be? And now you're letting ChatGPT really because it knows who you are. Now it can give you more informed um, ideas, so it can give you better ideas. It can help create better content for you. And so, um, some of the other things you can do, and you can do this two ways. 
actually think it's a little confusing they set it up this way but you can do this kind of free form the way that it, that it is right now you can also go in here and upload files so if you have documents you know your whole maybe your, your whole marketing communications plan right you could upload that into here if you have your um strategic plan you can upload that into here right so you can start just uploading documents i think there's a limit on the number i remember i reached it one time but i think it's like 20 or so documents it might be um maybe they've expanded that i don't know but keep uploading files until they tell you you can't upload anymore and the one thing i would recommend doing is turning on code interpreter that allows you to upload documents like csv files or data to analyze and so one of the ways that i love doing uh utilizing that is with parent surveys right you have a parent survey data with 100 200 responses or more you can upload that in here and you can ask it all the questions you want what are the top three reasons families choose our school uh what were they looking for in a school why wouldn't a family choose our school right so we can analyze that data for you and so I, I love code interpreter and, and uh, data analysis. And then here, I actually don't use this a whole lot, um, but you can create, you know, when you log into ChatGPT, it has those prompts in the beginning. It's like, hey, show me the current news today or whatever my, what are the, the general prompts are. You can create your own prompts so that when you log into your chat, your GPT, you could say, write me a social media post, draft ad copy. Um, now, like this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Draft ad copy promoting new course offerings. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. But draft ad copy promoting um, an upcoming open house event. Right, so you can say something like that. Suggest email copy for an event announcement. Okay, it's not bad. And so you can give it a, a few more as well for conversation starters. Now we can always come back in here, but let's just say create. Um, you, you can put it in, I wouldn't put this in a chat GPT store. You can say anyone with the link or only me. So if you want to share this with, you know, internally, you might just want to have it as anyone with the link so we can hit save. There we go. So there's your link. Let's view our GPT. So now on the left-hand side, it should say Ames Academy GPT. And then, you know, this is my GPT for content creation. Right now, again, if you wanted to use it for something else, imagine, you know, let's say you wanted to use it for helping with your fundraising, right? I would probably create a separate one specifically for fundraising strategies and content creation around fundraising, right? I might create a, a, a separate one for that. So you can create even these sub GPTs for whatever it might be, right? So we're talking about marketing. Maybe you want just one on enrollment management, um, one for your marketing, one for fundraising. So you can have your own specific GPTs. I think it's better if you separate it that way so that it kind of keeps the GPT on task. Is that helpful, everybody? Is that cool? Go ahead, Sarah. Oh, I was just saying it's helpful. Okay, cool. Okay, great. I'm I'm thinking that um, you know, we our school is K twelve. Yeah. Um, so we have not only the different market, um, you know, the different like there's I'm in marketing, but I can see how fundraising could really use this. I'm in marketing, but I could see how admissions and enrollment could really use this and how it would bridge some of the times when we as individual um effort centers don't always coordinate all that well <laughs> or, or you know a lot of the content comes back to us for revisions or you know generating it so I feel like it would make people more independent but aligned at the same time so that's what's in my mind as I'm listening to what you're saying yeah and and um you know you could even ask ChatGPT like act like a fundraiser like what what are what are some of the strategies that were missing here or how could my fundraising department utilize this and, and start you know prompting it to give ideas it's phil it's kind of like what you said right it's like find the what did i miss give me a second pair of eyes you know how can i collaborate better 
with the other members of my team? How could they use this? Um, so yeah, I mean, ideally everybody's utilizing it and working from the same kind of content, keeping everybody on brand, especially. And I think that's where we, I mean, that was probably the biggest complaint, you know, even when ChatGPT was first getting started, like, this is great. I could see, obviously see how this helps. Right. But it was like, ah, you know, it's right in such a weird style. I'm always editing the style or I have to put in the perfect prompt. That's still technically the case. I mean, it's, it's getting better and better, but if you do this, I think this just makes life so much easier. I mean, I use my own little Ames GPT for everything, right? For my emails, for ads, for website copy, for everything. Um, so there's specific things that I know I need it for, you know, writing, writing copy on the website, uh, webinar presentations. So it helps me greatly, especially with emails. Um, but a couple other things let me just mention. Uh, let's see here, explore GPTs. So I always get back to my GPTs. And then, where is it? Yeah, if you want to edit, you can always come in and edit it. You know, make sure you put in things like, hey, welcome back. Um, especially if you want to do things better. Like I always would want to put in, maybe I'll put this in the use cases. Um, So like parent surveys, testimonies, where do I want to put this? I'll just put it, I'll just start typing here. Um, parent questions and objections, right? I think this is actually really important that when families, as, as we're using this for marketing, as families are researching schools, they have questions, they have objections, they have concerns. There are things that they're weighing, right? You ideally you want to, to give that information to Chat GPT. Like when families are looking at our school, they're also looking at these other schools. They're looking for a bigger school. They're looking for schools with a, a certain sports programs. They're looking for schools that offer entrepreneur opportunities. Right? They choose our school for this reason. They don't choose our school for that reason. Give it as much information as possible because that ideally is what goes into your content creation that's answering the questions that are going on in the mind of your parents as they're doing that research right and then being able to always tie that back to and here's why families love our school and that comes into the portrait for graduate um and your parent surveys and testimonials so parent questions and objections concerns right so that's what we did let me see here I show it before. Here it is. So before we made our, we asked ChatGPT, what are the, what is it? What are the fears, frustrations, goals, and aspirations for families looking for a, a Montessori school? Right. So ideally, you would want to give this information. So if this was correct information, right, I would literally just copy this. Let's see here, let's copy this. And let's put it into our So I would have this in here. So if you if you have this information from your own survey data, great. If not, then I would ask ChatGPT, what are families looking for? <clears throat> yeah. So now it's going to use this information to create the content, to, to focus the content on the overwhelmed parent, the future-focused parent, the community-oriented oriented parent. Those are the three main reasons or the three things that are going on kind of in the mind with parents or as they're choosing a school and what they're looking for. I know we're kind of approaching the hour, about 15 more minutes or so. So um, may I ask Go a ahead. question? Um, yeah. So I saw that you added this in, 
was this writing from chat GPT or was this from original content that came from the school? This was from chat GPT, right? So this was part of, we were just showing how to, how to gather, how to teach chat GPT about what the type of content they should, it should create is right. So one of the things we had asked was, I want you to help me create social media content. Uh, oh, well, first, I want you to identify the fears, frustrations, goals, and aspirations for families searching for a private school or Montessori school. Put it in a table format. So this is what it produced. Now, ideally, you would have your parents' survey data. You would upload that in the chat GPT and say, you give it a similar prompt. Why do families choose our school? What are they looking for? What might be their fears, frustrations, goals, and aspirations? But yeah, if you so need I understand help with that, that, I'm just I'm confused why you re you re added it to the Montessori GPT if it came from this was an old one. I'm sorry, I'm I'm switching between. Um, oh, got it. Okay, now this was something it. we did before. I'm just putting it in here just got for it. example purposes. That if you have this information, put it into your custom GPT. Yeah. What else? What other questions does anybody have in regards to ChatGPT, creating a custom GPT, anything related to AI or GPTs? Go ahead, Taylor. Um, how long do you think it would take to input all the data and then to use it? Is that a one person thing? Is it a, like, just logistically, I'm playing out in my mind how this would be initially created and then rolled out across the school. So, and then whether there'd be resistance uh, to buy in as well. Well, I think the, the more input that you can get from multiple people, I, I always think the more input that you can get, and you ask the questions, hey, what? what you know, especially with marketing and admissions, right? You know, I, and I work with a lot of schools, especially with their marketing. You know, the best campaigns I ever run or help in running are the ones where everybody can kind of come together. Everybody's on the same page, right? So if you can get everybody on the same page with this, I I think it's only going to help you in working together and making sure it's, it's really on brand and the same message. I think that's where it would really help. Now, would there be any pushback? What do you think? What, what what pushback do you anticipate? Or has anybody else received pushback in using this? You know, I think when it comes to, I've heard pushback in a lot of different areas, right? It's like, why should teachers be involved in the marketing of the school, right? You have some schools that are very marketing focused, you have other schools where it's only the marketer, the marketing director does the marketing and everybody else doesn't do marketing, right? Those are very two different types of cultures. And I remember being in workshops and that person in the, in the non-marketing culture be like, how do I get more people on board with marketing? In this case, how do I get more people maybe on board with using chat GPT, right? Or building our custom GPT, if that's a concern. I think it's a, it's just education, Right. I think when it comes to chat GPT, when it comes to marketing, when it comes to anything that's maybe not in in somebody's main role, they're going to have a lot of preconceived notions about what it is. So I've always suggested if you can take the time during like an in-service type of day or schedule a time where it's like, hey, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, I just want to give this presentation on here's what we're doing and why and how you can help or how it's going to benefit you or how we would like to collaborate. If you can take the time to do that and get everybody on board with something that hey, maybe you feel like they're not going to be on board with, um, that's usually my my approach. Anybody else, whether it's with any kind of getting getting your team on board, had success doing that if they weren't on board originally, whether it's just getting more people on board with the concept of marketing the school or. I think teachers are doing marketing without realizing that they're doing marketing. And when you separate them, it becomes a problem. Great point. Yeah. And I, I and teachers definitely don't think of themselves as doing marketing, right? But, you know, that's that's really important. Because I've heard on the other end where it's like teachers get, 
I, I hear things like, oh, teachers get so annoyed when we bring families in for tours. And, you know, it's like, well, it's a huge part of making sure those seats are, are full in your classroom and they can see how it's working. So like the teachers, you know, being a partner in that, it's important. And, and some are great, but I've heard, I've heard stories where it's not great. So it's like, how do we overcome that? And I'm, sorry, I'm not sure if I answered your question. Hopefully I answered your question. I'm not sure if we went on a tangent there, but is that helpful or is yeah, there? Yeah, no, it was really helpful. I'm um, yeah. I'm in marketing, but I have a, a background in strategy. <laughs> and so I always go to great idea. How do you, how are we going to um, like, we have to show the benefit of this to yeah. anybody to get them to use it. And, and, and I don't think that'll be hard. I don't think I'll be hard, but I'm just thinking about how one would do that. And I'm curious if there's pushback. And you know, part of it is sometimes it's like, hey, I'll do this myself. I'll show how it's working for myself. And then, hey, this is how it worked for me. I thought it'd be beneficial for you too. Um, we deal a lot with that, like when it comes to our software, right? There's a marketing side, there's the admission side. And usually if I'm talking like to the marketing person, like I can see how this can be used for admissions. But man, they have to change what they're doing and maybe we'll bring them on later. So it's like, hey, we're going to use this for the marketing side of things, show them what it can do. And then we'll start bringing them into the conversation a little bit later, especially if like they're averse to uh, change. That is exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, build it for yourself, right? What else? What else when it comes to ChatGPT didn't we cover or... Questions. Oh, there are some questions here. Sorry. Um, I missed these as I was talking. Uh, how private can the GPT be kept? Yeah, Matt, that's a great question. Um, it can be kept just for you. It's up to you if you want to make it public. So you can make it public. Well, I think we saw, right? You can you can, it could be only for you. It could be anybody with the link or you can make it public in the store. So it's purely up to you how public you want to, you want to make it. Um, all right. Yes, this is all being recorded. I hope I'm recording this. Am I recording this? Yeah, I'm recording this. Um, okay, Matt, you had a question. Do you have knowledge of this and opinion of this? So it looks like, is this an AI platform? Yeah. I thought I thought it was considered a chat GPT. I'm just starting to understand. Uh, oh, there's tons. There are tons out there now. Um, what what can I, I haven't heard of Yes Chat, but a no. lot of what I'm finding I'm finding two things when it comes to the AI platforms. You're getting project specific AIs like. Here's an AI that's going to help you create videos. And here's an AI that's going to help you, you know, kind of like we saw in the store, an AI for images. And here's an AI that's going to keep you productive, right? I've seen them all. Um, so you're you're seeing a lot of different specific AIs. So that's one end of the spectrum. Then I'm also seeing the other end of the spectrum, which is almost like a um, an AI curator, where it's, hey, give me your prompt. And then I'll produce that using ChatGPT, using Gemini, using, there's one called Claude. There's a lot of different AI platforms out there that have their different models. And it kind of runs it through. It's almost like, um, I don't know if this is a good example or not, but like a, uh, I don't know, like a, like a, I don't know why I'm thinking like hotels.com, right? It's like, you go there, right? And it's like, search for a hotel and it gives you all the different from the different hotel websites. It's kind of like that, like a curator of, of AIs. And I don't know, like one stop solution to use GPTs. This, that might be what this is. Um, it's a curator, all GPTs at instant access. I'm thinking that that's kind of what this might be is like this big curator of, of GPTs. Okay. I'm going to say charging for it. Uh, the ultras sixteen dollars a month. Yeah, so so like kind of what the pitch is is, hey, don't go spend twenty bucks on just the ChatGPT or to OpenAI's version. We'll give you OpenAI's version, 
plus all these other versions in there. Um, and it might be more than that. I, I, I'll be honest. I haven't used a whole lot beyond, beyond OpenAI's ChatGPT. I use the script for video editing, which is pretty good for like AI video editing. And that's that's this platform. Here it is, the script.com. This is pretty awesome. We're like, instead of editing video by like finding the spots of the video and cropping it, you can actually edit just the text and then it edits the video instead. It's pretty cool. Okay. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answer. I, I don't know. You said... You said it seems, did you say, Matt, this seems Montessori specific? Is there a Montessori? Yeah, the, the yes chat does when I was looking at the page before it. And like, I'm just not quite understanding. Um, like when you were talking about Canva, like I have Canva and their chat GPT is awesome. But do you take the Canva one and put it on your website and then use it for your website? Because like when we were looking at chat GPT, there was like a Canva one, but I didn't know if that was like to take you to that website or if it was to use that bot. I, I haven't used it. I've seen other people that have used I I think, I mean, it, essentially you're connecting them via API. Mm -hmm. And so you tap and type in the chat GPT, like what you want to create, and then it creates it in chat in, in Canva. Okay. I understand. I'm sure there's a lot of other more interesting ways to use it beyond that. But um yeah, so like if you type in Montessori here, this could be like your Montessori mentor. It's interesting. So yeah, and this is kind of, again, another version of what we've done, right? These are custom built GPTs for a specific purpose that in this case you have to pay for. In our case, what we were doing is custom GPT specifically just for your school. Like I know Ask Your PDF, this is in OpenAI as well that you can get access to. So it's like it's giving you access to the store again. Um, yeah, I'll have to look at this a little bit more. Any other questions? So yeah, I'll share this with everybody and it's it's in the uh, the chat as well. But as far as a takeaway, Go and start trying to create your own GPT. And look, you can go to YouTube, right? How to create my own custom GPT. You can get even more uh, detail than even we, we went through here. But I think most importantly is, you know that this is possible. You know, okay, I know the end result is this should write, research, do whatever you want to do based upon our school information now, as opposed to kind of just starting new every single time. So as long as you know kind of what's possible, then you can play around with it and keep making it better and better. But just start by uploading your your the website content, your different academic pages, your mission statement, your portrait of a graduate, example pieces of copy, example emails, example ads, example whatever. Load it in there, and you're off to a good start. And then you can always refine it and add more. All right. All right, everybody. I hope you found this helpful. We're we're wrapped up on the hour here. You know, as always, you know, especially when it comes to marketing, if you need any, like one of the things we're doing right now for a lot of schools, if you're interested, is just a free uh, marketing audit. Like if you want to look at oh, where is it? Uh, marketing report. So if you go to getaims.co forward slash marketing report, I'll put this in the chat for anybody that wants to. It's just a free audit report of your your digital presence hey how are we doing with social media how are we doing with our ads how are we doing with ranking so definitely beyond what we're talking today about ai but if you just want an audit report that shows you how you're doing in all the different areas of your digital presence we give you a report that you know exactly hey here's where we're strong here's where we need to work on and we can gear the report based upon where your goals are you know hey if you're like hey i just want to report on how are we doing with our ads or i want to report on um, how do we rank better in Google when families are looking for private schools near me, right? We could spend the majority of our time talking about that, but yeah, free report for you guys um, to take back with you and to show you strengths and gaps. So that's my pitch.
All right, everybody. Thanks for joining. Have a good rest of the week. Any questions, always reach out, but I'll see you next week and we'll figure out our topic for next week. Keep an eye on your email. All right, everybody. Take care.